So with so much focus on meta booking versus meta search, what is the charter today for successful meta search versus online travel agencies? Tamlin, uh, you want to start, Hashem? Did you oh, sorry. Frank, I think Frank was uh, uh, volunteering. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I can't obviously speak for my, my friends in the stage here, but the one thing which we are not trying to do is to become an OTA, to become a merchant. I, I have suspicions um, that the likes of Kayak and Google Flight Search are trying to become a transactional site, and since they're not here, I will speak ill of them because they can't defend themselves. Um, and it's too good an opportunity. However, prosaically what this is about for us is increasing the conversion rate, removing the friction from the user experience that exists within the traditional meta redirection model. But there's something more fundamental here, which is about us trying to unlock the potential of the marketplace which exists within meta. If you consider an airline and, and their requirements, all that we will do with meta booking or facilitated booking is drive more conversions, drive them more economy back of the plane referrals, which is fair enough, but it's not really what they want. With the emergence of, of NDC and bringing that together with meta booking, that allows us and allows the airline to start controlling their ancillary revenues, to start injecting ancillary revenues into the process, and we stop becoming a kind of loss-making third-party distributor and become an extension of their first party ancillary rich distribution. And we think has got the ability to really change the game when it comes to airline distribution and indeed hotel distribution. So it's not about becoming an OTA, it's about allowing these partners to extend their first party capabilities in, in our view. All right, so Frank, so Skyscanner is strictly air. So are you doing booking? Do you facilitate yes, do. the booking yes, in all markets? In no, no, increasingly markets? so. I mean, we, we really only started this in earnest about nine to 12 months ago. We're now working with six or seven OTAs globally on, on meta booking. We have launched with three or four airlines on meta booking. Um, technology kind of gets in the way. The, the, the adoption of NDC as a, as a schema, as a standard, is slow, but it's beginning to pick up. But we're also working with most of the large PSSs, particularly Navitair and Amadeus, where we can actually kind of work with the, the IT systems, the booking systems of, of those um, airlines and allow for meta booking and allow for that ancillary and merchandising upsell. So we're trying to accelerate it on, on many, many fronts and, and it will probably be responsible for the majority, we think, of meta booking, certainly on Skyscanner within the next nine to 12 months. Yeah. Ross, what about you with WeGo? I mean, are you thinking about doing booking or are you into it yet? What is the yeah, strategy? So, yeah, so, Whereabouts? Um, so we, we have facilitated booking in, um, in beta with um, half a dozen large uh, flight OTAs at the moment. So For we're, we're, we're starting, with, um, starting with OTAs. We will move on to, um, to airlines and then into the into hotel. And this is, this is actually something we, we, we had a first crack at about three and a half years ago on the hotel side. We worked with some of our big um, hotel OTAs on the, on the, on the desktop web. Um, we found at that point, you know, the, the unit economics um, were actually less favorable than the traditional meta model. So we, we sort of put it, uh, put it in hibernation for a few years um, and now bringing it back. Um, we're looking at it this time primarily through the mobile app lens. So removing, um, yeah, removing all the pain points from our customers who are, are trying to book across multiple um, multiple OTAs and multiple airlines. So they'll populate a, a wallet one time with us with all of their you know, passport information, you know, all the information you need to complete an airline PNR, and then one click to complete a booking regardless of who you're booking with. Um, so you know, we think that's a huge win for customers, and we're seeing you know, great increases in conversion rates from the, the people we've been, been trialing it with. On the air side and the hotel side? Uh, we're, we're, only, we're only in beta on the air side at the moment. We think, we think the air booking is fundamentally more difficult than hotel, so that's the, we're starting with a bigger problem first. Okay, Shane? Yeah, I mean, we, um, I'd like to say what Frank was saying, that we definitely don't want to be an OTA either. We, we see the only way it can work is if it's a, a very clear partnership between Meta and OTA chain hotel. Um, all we're doing is we're shifting a couple of the steps in the booking process closer to Meta to reduce the, uh, the, the friction. And uh, we also think that it doesn't really make much sense to 
I mean, this is an assumption, obviously, we need to test it, but to go with the, the, the big global uh, OTAs and do it that way, because they're obviously very strong brands, they're well recognized, their um, conversion path is very strongly optimized. So mm. even if we make a slight bit of difference, it'll be, it'll be very marginal. Where there's more low hanging fruit is if we look at the niche players who don't have as many languages or um, don't have a very strong mobile site. This is where we can actually expose different inventory around the world to our customers um, and also benefit our, our supply partners at the same time. But are any of you doing what TripAdvisor is doing and booking directly with hotels? Yes. Individually? We, we are, yeah. You are doing that. Yeah. In which markets? Um, we have about 12 markets that we're doing that, including so, uh, Asia. Can we bring up a slide, pie chart? So we recently asked our, we recently asked in the US travelers, Anyway, but we, what they generally disagreed about what actually happened when they used MetaSearch to books. In other words, they were very confused as to, yes, I was redirected, yes, to another OTA, yes, I went direct to a website, I booked on the MetaSearch site, or I just had no idea. And I mean, is that really good for consumers? I mean, are we really enhancing the customer no, experience no, or are we making the process more confusing? It's very, very bad because there's some really, really poor execution out there. And there's some really, really confused strategies as to what is going on. If you go into Kayak, the first booking option that you get on Kayak much of the time is a Kayak branded booking option. Now, it's meta booking, but it's Kayak and it's powered by an OTA. The, the fundamental difference here and, and the way that you alleviate that kind of confusion is to create the correct marketplace. We are very, very big proponents and fans of the Tmall marketplace model as opposed to the Amazon marketplace model. In Amazon marketplace, you have multiple vendors, but everything is obfuscated to Amazon. You're always dealing with Amazon. In the Alibaba Tmall model, all of the major brands have got flagship stores. They exist within the Tmall marketplace, but they own their own brand experience, they own their own inventory, they own the customer experience, the facilitation of that and the fulfillment of that ultimately downstream. The consumers are not confused. The consumers are confused here because at the moment, we have a mixture of redirection, we have Kayak with one particular strategy, Skyscanner with another particular strategy, and these guys with a, a slightly different one. We have to alleviate that confusion. I believe the solution was within MetaBooking, but the strategy has to be clear about the fact, are, are you, you a doing that now? Yeah, we are, we, are. We, we increasingly are. We want a user under MetaBooking to know that when they are booking with British Airways, it is very clear, even though you remain on Skyscanner, the brand experience, the ancillary experience, the booking flow, the downstream experience, the customer relationship management is with British Airways, not with Skyscanner. I think it alleviates the confusion, but right now we're, we're not doing ourselves as, a, as an industry many favours. Yeah, it's important a user knows who they go to, if they, if they have some post-booking you know, changes they want to make with the ticket, you know, who they call. Um, I also think, um, I actually agree with Frank, if you're running a marketplace, I think it's important that you're not participating in that marketplace. I think it's, it's, it's best to be neutral, hands off. Um, I think that works better for all the participants on both sides of it. So this is a mobile session, and to talk about mobile. And what, how would you consider yourselves kind of mobile businesses at this point? I mean, is it over kind of half of your transactions? Um, I wouldn't say half yet, uh, depends on some markets uh, and, and channels, but it's, it's getting close to that. And we're seeing definitely that the search to book ratio has improved a lot on mobile. Uh, it still lags behind uh, desktop, but um, we can see that the user confident, the behavior is implying that the user is more confident to book on mobile Why and, is that? and pay. I mean, I think it's just um, general trends and um, Slightly larger phones. I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I mean, I've had confidence to, book, to you know, pay on mobile for four years, but some people are just realizing it. But, but it seems to be worldwide. Uh, and what if you way. had to do Skyscan? You launched when? Skyscanner launched when? Uh, How the, many the, years ago? The the, the mobile the, 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 yeah, the, uh, the site itself. Uh, well, Skyscanner itself launched in 2003. <laughs> mobile, we probably launched in earnest maybe kind of four years ago. So it's went through a ago. certain progression it, from it, being you know desktop web to uh, you completely. Uh, the, the share of our, our traffic, our, our unique visitors, is now 60% mobile globally. In certain Asia Pacific markets, which is the first truly mobile first region, we're 74% mobile in, in uh, Korea. 
Um, in India, we've seen our uh, visitor numbers increase by 90% overall year on year, but 230% on, on, on mobile. The, the point that I would like to make about mobile is pretty much every organization who attends this conference and your other conferences will claim to be mobile first. I would say maybe 10 or 20% of them genuinely are mobile first. We've got a mantra within Skyscanner that, that, that runs our product development and design, which is degrade to desktop. We start designing on mobile, and then we don't bloat that product design as we move to the larger form factors. Um, and I think it's a very, very important distinction to make that you start on mobile in every aspect of your business now, whether it's design, product development, uh, the economics of your business and the business models that you follow. The, the, the numbers you're sharing were traffic, right? Not uh, transactions. Yeah, how do you Is measure? Right? How are you measuring mobile? That's a good question. I, I thought you asked me transactions. I, I did he, ask he about traffic. transactions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I'm, I'm traffic is definitely higher than 50%, yeah. but you know the conversion lags. So um, con yeah. conversion. But w the way we we measure it at the moment, it's is, it's very specific to mobile. What we're trying to work out is the whole kind of cross device. Uh, an attribution thing, which is uh, you know still a bit of a challenge, yeah. uh, particularly on meta search. So how how are you working through that, and how important is it to kind of get? It's very important. How important is loyalty? Does loyalty come to play at all into this? I mean, is there loyalty in meta, and and because how do you then get to track the the individual if you can't get them to log in, or you can't get them to become a member, or have some sort of relationship with that customer? So it's, it's quite easy in the, in the mobile app universe. You have a, a mobile device identifier. Um, so whether somebody's registered with you or not, you can, you can, you can track their sessions across months. And um, you don't have the same issue you have with, with um, browsers, with cookies being blown away, or multiple devices. You know, yes, people change phones and you know, re, reformat, reinstall apps from time to time, but it's relatively easy to, to track. Um, when we've looked at... Um, when we looked at cross-device uh, conversions, we, we, we find there's roughly a 20% uplift in conversions that are happening uh, downstream. So people who started their travel shopping um, in a WeGo mobile experience who later converted on a, on a desktop. Um, so working with some of the, the, the um, you know, Facebook's Atlas uh, technology to, to, to figure that out. And that, that's, that's roughly what we see when we, we look at the Google um, cross-device uplift numbers as well. I, th I think, going back to the original point about meta booking and how, how it works on mobile, again, that's a huge part of the solution here because there's a big amount of dissonance that happens under the traditional meta redirect model when you're redirecting from one mobile experience to another, when you're redirecting from one type of device or form factor to another. And meta booking brings all of that into the one experience, so that dissonance begins to, begins to disappear. Um, yeah. But you said you're still challenged, to shame with that cross device strategy yeah I mean I think especially on, on on meta even if they're using our app and they find a good price they'll still go to their desktop and go to the OTA that they saw so we kind of lose the the cookie so there's still a there's still a little bit of leakage there um, and I, I don't think they will ever be able to solve it completely but it's just something we've got to keep in mind Loyalty. I want to get back to loyalty. Is so, there yeah, such a thing as loyalty? I, 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 I don't think anyone in the meta space is, is good at loyalty, is good at personalization or, 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 or a customer relationship management at all. It's the one area where when we compare ourselves to our general universe of peers and OTAs and airlines that we fail um, more than anyone else. You're correct. There, there's been very, very little reason that we can give users to, to sign up and, and have that kind of experience with them. Meta booking begins to do that because, to, mm. to Ross's point, one-click booking then becomes the Amazon one-click booking. Once we know that user, we have their information, we can, we can send them across. So the loyalty but is through the utility? It's through utility, but it has to also, again, Meta have not been very good at content. They've not been very good at content that derives destination selection and inspiration. They've not been great at content that happens in the travel experience once the purchase is made. And it's those reasons that will then allow a user to come back Retention, we work to a thing called a partner state machine, and retention is, is probably the most important part of that. We have a natural repeat visit um, percentage of around about 50, 55%, so it's good, 
the problem is we don't know an awful lot about who those users are and why they're coming back. And it's a, it's a, a, a big challenge for us to, to try to improve it. It's probably the area that we have to improve most. Do you have membership? I mean, what are you doing on the loyalty side? We do, but we only started recently, to be honest. We, our, our, our DNA wasn't very much on the brand side. Initially, it was more kind of technology focused for our partners through our affiliate program. But the last three years, we've been focusing much more on our own, uh, on our own brand and, and, and loyalty. And we're a little bit behind, definitely. But um, some markets react differently. They're much, there's much bigger appetite to, to sign up. Um, but again, I think it's, it's about utility. If they can see the value in, in, in the product itself, the, how fast it is, how easy it is to find um, the, you know, the ideal uh, accommodation for them at the best price, then uh, I think they'll come back. Lorraine, we have a question from the floor. Yep. Over to your Hi, right. Maggie, there you are. Hi, right here. Um, so we saw with uh, Booking.com joining, Book on TripAdvisor, that it's not possible to completely bury the brand. Um, what's your view on that? Is it our smaller um, OTAs happier to give up brand placement uh, in order for the better conversion, or what's your what's your view on that? I, th I think um, it's got to be a balance. I, d I don't think we, we don't want to be an OTA. We don't want the headache of, of being an OTA, to be honest. I don't, I don't know why we would, anybody would want to be an OTA at the moment. But um, I think it's very important that we clarify to uh, the user who they're booking with, because you know it's their customer, not ours. Um, but there are varying degrees of how much they might be willing to um, you know, show their brand or reduce the exposure of their brand. But for us, we want it to be kind of 50-50. Um, and, and that's why I said I don't think it really, for us, our assumption is that it doesn't really add value if it's a very big player that is already converting very well. Yeah, makes sense. It's actually not in our interest to bury the, it's not in our interest to bury the brands either. So um, conversion rate is directly proportional to the strength of a brand. So by removing the brands, your conversion rate is, is going to fall. So we, we all make less money. No, I it, would agree with even that. Even some of the lesser brands. Or so lesser known brands, even with some of the lesser known brands or the, the smaller so OTAs. The, 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 the strength of, the, 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 you know, of all the people participating in our marketplaces, uh, I think this would be true for you guys as well, the, you know, the, the stronger the brand and you know, what, what it's known for with users definitely impacts conversion rates above and beyond price. Okay. Uh, our view of that is that in all circumstances, Skyscanner's brand within the meta booking space should be subordinate to the, the partner's brand. We need that clarity with the user to your, your pie chart earl, earlier on. However, there are some smaller brands who will benefit from leading with the Skyscanner brand that it's actually mm -hmm. the Skyscanner seal of approval here in a specific marketplace or in a specific vertical that might actually improve their conversion. Mm -hmm. We would absolutely not say that with Booking.com or Expedia or Lufthansa or, or, or Indigo or, 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 or whatever. But some of the lesser brands may choose not to push their brand too far and to work more closely with Skyscanner. So you guys are pretty cut and dry with your product. Well, you have hotel and air, air, hotel. And you know, we had a session earlier today, where's the ground meta? You know, where there's, you know, we have Ixigo, right? Doing bus and doing trains and doing all sorts of other individual apps. So why haven't you expanded outside of your core product? And do you have plans? Uh, well, for us, as, as the name suggests, um, <laughs> we're going to uh, remain completely focused on the accommodation sector. Maybe not just hotels, obviously. We are looking at alternative accommodation, but we don't believe that um, searching for hotels and booking for hotels has been solved yet. Um, despite everybody's you know, best intentions, we still think it's a stressful process for the user to you know, really feel that they found the best hotel, the best deal, um, before they even get to the hotel. So. Um, we're laser focused on continuing to get that right. We don't want to distract ourselves with anything else. Okay. But you're you looking into alternative accommodations being Correct. Uh, like home rentals? Yeah, vacation mm -hmm. rental. We already have some and, and are looking at others. It's, it's, it's complicated to put yeah, in. I was going to say, is there complexity in that in meta? A little bit, because you're not really always kind of comparing like for like. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sometimes it's unique inventory. So. so it's a problem you're trying to solve right now. Exactly, yeah. Lorraine, we have another question over to the right. Over to your right. Hi there, this is Imbert Fung from Kayak. How are you? <laughs> hey. uh, thanks for mentioning us a couple of times. Um, just to set the record straight, uh, we also agree with uh, the gentleman from Hotels Combined. There's, we have no interest in becoming an OTA. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of people that you need, a lot of uh, 
a lot more work that you need to become an OTA, and we're not set up for that. So, uh, well, well, you are, you are pushing the kayak brand as, as what people are booking with as opposed to the, the partner brands. That, that's a great comment. So what we do is we do have facilitated options, which are what we uh, sometimes brand as kayak on our, on our, on our site. And we view the similar way with, uh, from, from your comment is that uh, many of our users are very loyal to kayak. So it actually increases the conversion for our partner. And then after the click, actually, we prominently display that it's powered by our OTA partner as well. So our views are actually quite similar. You know, we want to remove the friction as much as possible, and we want to increase conversion for our partners, and we have no interest in becoming an OTA. Um, on the mobile side, what we actually do see is that sometimes putting that kayak-powered facility booking option as the first option actually helps the user um, in, their, in, their, in their use case as well, because there's so much friction um, Booking uh, for flights, especially especially in mobile, that facilitated option as the first choice makes it easier for the user to choose. I, I guess my, my question to you, and I don't want this to become a, a kayak sky scanner debate, but is, is, is your view of the world that you're trying to create a kayak marketplace, or you're trying to create an open marketplace? From the outside looking in, it looks like a kayak marketplace. I think, um, I, I think there's, a, there's definitely a good point, um, especially with the pie chart that uh, all meta searches probably have to do a better job in terms of helping the consumer understand where they're booking from with the facilitated booking option. Um, but I, I, I don't think we're trying to create a quote unquote kayak marketplace. We're just trying to increase conversion and, and make the, the booking process as simple as possible. Now, can we do a better job in terms of labeling that and, and um, changing the interface such that it's more clear so that this pie chart is more coherent you know, next year? Then hopefully, hopefully we can. Um, is, that, is that a US? group that were questioned in that pie chart? Is that North America? Yeah, US family. On this, that pie chart? Oh, that? Yeah, it's North America. Yeah, Correct. Which is where Kayak owns 80% market share, so mm -hmm. you're probably actually causing the confusion as opposed to <laughs> helping. I'm going to just circle back a little bit, mentioning Kayak, because you just added restaurants, right, and activities, and I'm, so I'm circling back to my question on expanding product. Yeah. Frank? So, so um, we're not letting our company name define our company strategy. You know, we're not locked in just because we've got Sky in the title. Um, fundamentally, though, there are so many things we can do. We've played with multimodality in, in the past. We've played with bringing in holiday packages and insurance products. Actually, we realized that we were just creating confusion within our own business and, and uh, an inability to stack rank correctly. We're in a unique position. Flights is hard. Flights is skinny when it comes to margin. But flights, in terms of the booking funnel, is in a fundamentally important position. You book a flight before you book a hotel, before you book a car, before you decide what you're going to do on your trip. Our vision, our view right now, is that we win in flights, that we are the best in our space, in the flight space. We continue our success there. We have a very good hotels product. We have a market-leading car rental product. But right now, they are funnel attachment strategies for us mainly as opposed to being verticals in their own Because right. after I book my flight, then I'm thinking about ground. I'm thinking about getting to the airport. Correct. But you're, you're not interested in that. Oh, we're interested that you're thinking about it. Um, there's a limit to how much we can actually, actually do right now. So flights, hotel, cars, meta booking, and the development of that marketplace are, are where we're at right now. We're not saying these things are not important. They're not right now in our Focusing priority. Right. Lauren, we have another question you. from the floor. Gentlemen, on the previous session with Oil, Meninder basically said that uh, aggregator, aggregators are dead. And I guess MetaSearch is code for aggregators. So what say you about what Meninder said about 30 minutes ago? Well, we've got 60 million unique visitors and 50 million app downloads and a growth rate north of still 60% year on year, over 100% in the States, and over 90% in APAC that would question that contention. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that was his point. Like, it was like when someone told Michael Dell when he was at the top of the universe that PCs were going to fade, and he said, we have number one market share in the world, number one install. So I think it was more of a visionary question. Just curious what any of you thought about it other than you completely disagree. I, I, I think there's, there's a, a suggestion in here into that comment that choice is dying um, and that comparison is dying and that competition is dying and I, I don't subscribe to any of that. Mm. So you're obviously, you know, your, your businesses are, are 
your meta search, your, your pure meta search, you're doing booking, but your pure meta search, and you're also very much to the hotel, air, strictly, you know, really the vertical that you're in as well. You know, and then we have TripAdvisor, you know, we have Kayak, owned by Priceline, Trafago, owned by Expedia. You're independent, you're, you're niche. So is, what are the challenges? What's the, what does the future hold? Shane? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always challenges. I think um, f for us, we, we see it, we take it in small steps. So we're independent, we're self-funded, and um, we, we have a very lean team. Um, so we have to really pick our battles and, and really focus on delivery and, and not really jump too far into something that we might not be able to handle. So um, it, it's about really unlocking the potential step by step, iterating and creating a sustainable growth rather than some crazy one. We, we tried uh, two, three years ago to go a little bit too crazy and decided, no, <laughs> let's pull back a bit. But um, yeah, we, we're going market by market and uh, expanding quite profitably. So. And Frank? It, it simply allows us to remain agile and to remain masters of our own destiny. We, we don't have shareholders to answer to. We don't have a, a big brother company and a chief executive and top of a chief executive to answer to. We can make our decisions, despite the fact we're now 800 people as opposed to 80 people. We can still make the decisions. We can pivot our organization. Um, we, can, we can decide what we want to do within the space without having to answer to anyone else. Now, that, that might change in the future. I mean, goodness knows what, what the future holds. Um, we've got very, very supportive, friendly, and non-interventionist investors who allow us to do that. And as long as we continue the trajectory of success that we've seen over the last five, six, seven years, um, hopefully we will, be, we will continue with that kind of freedom. Laurie, we have another question from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Go, we gonna let Ross get away That's with fine. that that easy? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Ross, 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 what's going on? I was, was going to say, I, I think there's a lot to be said to be independent if you're running a marketplace. You know, we go, we're, we're focused on doing a you know, world-class job of you know, flight shopping, hotel shopping. A couple of years ago, we were doing cruises and packages and activities and holiday rentals. And you dropped it. Cars. We, we scrapped it all. We, we can't do a world-class job of everything. We're trying to be across multiple markets. Um, I, I think some of the stuff um, you know, Loke and Ixigo are doing is, is awesome you know, within the luxury of you know, focusing on one market. You know, I often wish we had the, you know, we had that luxury, but um, you know, we've chosen to go across multiple markets, so you know, we, so we have really to. Really, geographic expansion is, is more important than product expansion at this point, outside of your core product. Correct. Yeah, well, we see some advantages say? in being multi-market. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, dealing with an airline out of their home market, they typically don't need much help. They always need help filling the, the seats coming back. Mm -hmm. That's one example. There's, there's other advantage examples. You know, if you've, if you've got a big audience here. Um, you know, the, all of the national tourism organizations looking to, you know, to reach that audience you know, around the, the other markets we're operating in, um, you know, we, we, we can bring that to them. So right. it all helps with monetization. Right. Okay, Sorry, Luke. Hey, guys. Welcome to India. Um, I think one of the questions people have is Google's entry in, you know, vertical search, travel search, um, and how the metas as well as OTAs are going to be affected by it. I wanted your view on that. Um, and are you seeing that as an opportunity or a threat? Well, meta search and book on Google and the, yeah. right? The um, prim space. Primarily it's, I guess, a threat, but uh, we're looking for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's that for a diplomatic answer? <laughs> yeah. um, as, as, as soon as Google execute properly in flight search, then we'll, we'll, we'll be more scared of them than we currently are. Um, we, we'd, I remember when Google Flight Search launched, it was probably four or five years ago, mm. and we had a war room meeting because we thought it was going to be the end of our business. We were really still quite small at that point. Um, and we made all sorts of allowances within our financials as to what Google were going to do to them. And they've done precisely nothing in terms of our market share, in terms of the performance of our, our company. Now, that's not to say we're complacent. Um, Google are a large organization. I do question their motives in this space mm. and in other spaces. We watch them, but we're in no way hypnotized by them. Yeah. I actually think um, Google's more of a threat on the hotel side than on the flight side immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think if they, were, if, they, if they put their minds to it, pretty much everybody who's playing an aggregation role in the, in the travel industry today, you know, they could chip them away. I mean, overwhelming majority of travel shopping sessions start at Google, so they do have the power to funnel it into their own um, booking path if they so choose. One thing that holds them back, some of their biggest advertisers are also in the travel category, so there's a bit of tension there. Another question? 
Hey, uh, this is Vikal from Go I Bebo. So, uh, what are your take on personalization, personalized prices? I'm not talking about what Orbitz has done, but there are better ways of doing a personalized pricing, which could be a loyalty base across the brands. And uh, as the technology evolves, there will be a lot of these interesting aspects that we want to partake with uh, the customers who are fulfilling through us. So, uh, we would be obviously, and a lot of consumers will see the personalized pricing. So what would be your take around those lines? And then, uh, obviously, meta searches would not be able to give the exact price that a person would be booking at the fulfillment engine. So what are your take on personalized pricing? So we go, what we want you to do, what we want customers to do, register with us, tell us, um, you know, give us, give us all of your, your loyalty program information. And then when you know, those customers are shopping on WeGo, we pass, you know, we, we let you as a supplier or as an um, aggregator know you know, who, who that customer is, so either with specific loyalty information or we can give you a, a profile of what they've done previously and then you can choose to come back with a personal offer you know, based on what we've told you about them. Implemented somewhere? I mean, you guys are doing it uh, with some of your partners? It, it, it's in the labs. We're doing variations on it already. So some of our partners you know, are discounting you know, in our channel above and beyond what they're doing on their own website, but it's the actual personalization that, that, that's coming soon. Shame I see, Frank Skivington, Ross Beach, thank you very much.